New York City's famous skyline is an urban monument to humanity's audacious vertical ambitions. The Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, the Freedom Tower, all icons rising above the bustling streets below as reminders of the city's aspiration to build its stature higher and higher. But have these towering heights come at a cost? What if the same structures that define New York's identity are also contributing to its slow descent into the ground below? In this video, we'll explore the unsettling phenomenon of how New York's beloved skyscrapers are literally weighing down parts of the city, causing it to sink up to two millimeters per year. We'll look at how the skyline's vast weight presses down on the loose geology far beneath the concrete jungles of Manhattan and Brooklyn. Before starting, do subscribe to TechBlazer, the geology behind New York's sinking problem. New York City sits on a bed of loose sediment left over from the last ice age. As the massive glaciers that once covered North America receded about 18,000 years ago, they deposited thick layers of soft clay, sand, and gravel across what is now New York. This loose sediment reaches depths of up to 175 feet in parts of the city. Additionally, New York City is situated right beside the point where two ancient continents collided hundreds of millions of years ago. This tectonic collision formed the bedrock, far beneath the city's streets and skyscrapers. But it also left fault lines that crisscross the bedrock under Manhattan and the surrounding boroughs. These two quirks of New York's geology, thick glacial sediments and fractured bedrock, make the city's foundation weak and prone to compressing under heavy weights. Enter the city's famous skyline of towering skyscrapers. If you're enjoying this video, please subscribe to TechBlazer. How skyscrapers compress the city's sediments. New York City's skyscrapers weigh thousands of tons due to their steel superstructures and massive concrete footprints. The Empire State Building, for example, weighs an incredible 365,000 tons, and One World Trade Center weighs a gargantuan 1.5 million tons, more than the Eiffel Tower. All this weight presses down on the loose sediments below, slowly compressing them and causing the buildings and the ground beneath them to sink gradually over time in a process called subsidence. While subsidence occurs naturally all over the world at low rates, New York skyscrapers are speeding up the process. In Manhattan, buildings have sunk at rates up to an inch per year in the past century. Parts of the city built on especially loose sediments regularly see rapid sinking such as LaGuardia Airport, which is built on landfills along the East River. How much is New York sinking? Scientists estimate that New York City is subsiding at a rate of about one to two millimeters per year on average due to the sheer weight of its massive buildings. This may not sound like much, but it adds up over time. Since record keeping began in 1900, some areas of Manhattan have sunk by more than 12 inches, according to researchers. More precise satellite data from recent years shows variable subsidence across New York City. Downtown Manhattan is sinking by about 1.5 millimeters per year. Midtown, the center of New York's skyscraper district, is sinking by 10 millimeters per year. Northeast Queens is sinking by over 11 millimeters per year. At this rate, if left unchecked, the sinking could total over a foot by the end of this century. And that doesn't even account for faster future sea level rise driven by climate change. The cascading impacts of New York's sinking problem, the slow downward creep of New York City due to its tall towers, may seem like a trivial issue. But scientists warn that the cascading impacts of subsidence pose a major threat to the city's future landscape and infrastructure. Here are just some of the compounding consequences of New York's skyscraper-driven sinking. Worsened coastal flooding, New York already faces enhanced flooding driven by sea level rise. Add in sinking land, and that pushes flood levels even higher. By 2050, land subsidence could account for over $100 million in added flood damages, according to one estimate. Infrastructure damage, sinking strains and ruptures, water mains, cracks streets and sidewalks, and shifts transit rails. This can create hazardous conditions across the city. Foundation issues. As the land sinks unevenly across neighborhoods, building foundations settle at different rates, leading to structural issues. Saltwater intrusion. As parts of the city sink, it allows the interfaces where rivers meet the sea to shift further inland, enabling saltwater to contaminate aquifers and infrastructure. Lower elevation. Obviously, sinking terrain brings the ground and building foundations progressively closer to sea level over time, exacerbating all the risks outlined above. 
Taken together, these impacts underscore how New York City's skyward aspirations contain the seed of its own future destruction, unless action is taken. Get the latest videos, subscribe now. Adaptation efforts to slow New York's sinking. City officials and urban planners are not blind to the slow sinking that imperils New York's future. With over $60 billion in property value at risk, major climate adaptation efforts are underway to help fortify the city. Monitoring subsidence, a network of GPS stations tracks how different neighborhoods sink to pinpoint at-risk zones. Satellite data adds a bird's eye view. Building codes, new regulations will require flood-proof foundations that can handle changing flood regimes made worse by uneven subsiding land. Drainage improvement, keeping storm drains and sewer systems maintained counters flooding worsened by sinking terrain. Recharging aquifers, pumping water back into exhausted underground aquifers can help slow soil compression. Raising land elevations, new parks, berms, and seawalls on the waterfronts boost elevations and guard against rising seas. Elevating infrastructure, roads, piers, and subway entrances are all being lifted to maintain effective clearance above higher flood levels caused by sinking. These multi-billion dollar investments in climate proofing demonstrate that New York recognizes the existential threat posed by rising seas and subsiding land, but there are limits to how far adaptation can go. Ultimately, holding back the tides in New York will require cutting greenhouse gas emissions and slowing the pace of climate change worldwide. Before moving on, subscribe to TechBlazer, the broader lessons of New York's plight. New York City's predicament holds broader lessons for coastal cities worldwide. The dramatic rise of skylines poses an inherent contradiction. Aspirations of building upward also increase risks of sinking downward, especially on loose coastal sediments. Beyond New York, cities from Shanghai to Dubai to London all face similar risks that their towering urban ambitions will slowly swallow them into the ground below. Their quests to build global icons of progress may ultimately render their coastlines more vulnerable to the severe flooding expected in our warming world. New York's struggle with subsidence is a warning that even amid humanity's towering technological feats, we remain bound by the geological forces of the planet. As climate change multiplies coastal risks, cities must adapt both their towering heights and their ground-level defenses. Finding this balance will be critical to ensure coastal mega-cities don't sink under their own magnificence. The fate of New York and other coastal cities hinges on collective decisions we make today. Their iconic skylines remind us that even the most monumental cities remain hostage to the changing climate. But if we act now to curb greenhouse gas emissions, we can still help those great cities endure far into the future atop their sinking foundations. In closing, New York City's sinking predicament holds lessons for coastal cities across the globe. Though skyscrapers stand as monuments to human engineering, their immense weight can worsen sinking, especially on loose sediments. As climate change drives rising seas, cities must balance soaring heights with grounded adaptation. New York's experience shows that even mighty cities remain captive to geology's forces. But by curbing emissions today, we can help our most iconic skylines endure for generations to come atop their sinking foundations. If you found this video illuminating, please subscribe to TechBlazer for more content examining environmental threats and how we can address them. Thank you for watching.